to She Walks, She Paints. Thanks for joining us again. Um, we're about to head out, but unfortunately, Mr. Jack Spaniels has got a little cut on his paw. So just to be on the safe side, <laughs> he's not coming with us today. He's gonna go and get spoiled rotten by his grandparents. Um, so yeah, we're leaving you behind today. Just this once, I promise. And then you'll be back. But we just wanna make sure his paw is okay. So you're gonna go see grandma and granddad? Yeah? In the car. Welcome back again. I've arrived at the destination now. Unfortunately, without Jack Spaniels, he was safely deposited at his grandparents. It's gonna feel really weird going for a walk today without him. He would have loved it here because there's lots of woodland and rivers to explore, but he'll have a really nice day anyway, and hopefully heal his paw enough that he can join me on the next walk. So we've come to a place called Balquidder in Stirlingshire today, which is a new part of Scotland that I've not done on this channel before. And our starting point is the burial place of Rob Roy McGregor, who's quite a famous figure in Scottish history and across the world as well. It's absolutely beautiful here, so you can understand why he would want to be laid to rest in a place like this. So we'll go have a look at the kirkyard and then we'll head out on a walk and see what we can find. <laughs> Rob Roy McGregor is known to many as a folk hero, a kind of Scottish Robin Hood figure, although his story has been romanticised over the years. Originally a cattle driver, McGregor was outlawed by the Duke of Montrose in 1712, and he stole cattle and rents from the Duke until he was eventually caught and imprisoned ten years later. Even in his lifetime he had already reached hero status, and maybe because of this popularity, he received a pardon from King George I in 1727, just as he was about to be transported to the colonies in Barbados.
just saw something below that I wanted to point out on camera and then I've lost it again. <laughs> Aha. See there? That's some new fern growth just waiting to pop out. They'll be unfailing slowly in the next few months. Spring is ready to happen. these quartz crystals everywhere. They're beautiful. Oh, that's a big one. Wow. Big chunk of quartz. Beautiful. Found these teeny tiny little mushrooms. How cool are they? So small. This amazing view looks down the Balquida Glen, with Loch Foyle reflecting the surrounding mountains.
Craig and Turk translates from the Scottish Gaelic as the Boar's Rock. This viewpoint is also the ancient rallying place of Clan McLaren, who gathered up here in times of danger. The clan still gather here every year, after the annual Highland Games, where the McLarens and the McGregors hark back to their old rivalry with a game of tug of war. everywhere. It's like flashes of snow on the hills. Snowy white quartz. It's so beautiful, it's everywhere on the path. When I was a kid I would have gone home with pockets full of this. So we've just turned the halfway point of the walk, that's us heading back now to where we started. I've done about three and a half miles so far, so it's pretty good going. Not too challenging, but it uh, feels like quite a distance, so I think I'm getting my steps in today. And it just feels really strange without Jack here, really miss him, just running around and doing his silly things. So it was really nice to meet Jock back there, he had a lot of similar traits, the same dog, Sprocker Spaniel. But yeah, it's been really beautiful, it's got some great views and we'll just have to make sure I get some nice photographs as well. So I've got something to take back to the studio. We left the main path here to take a track through the forest. It reminded me of trips to Scotland when I was a child, listening to tales of trolls and looking for fairies in the woods. Scotland has always felt magical to me. It's easy to believe that fairy tales could come true here.
I think that is a scarlet elf cup mushroom. There's also a little wood elf making his way through the world. Hey, yeah. I think that's what it is. Or at least half of one, anyway. Let's see if I can find some more. And that's us nearly done, we're nearly back where we started. Had a lovely walk, got some amazing views from that viewpoint especially, like just down that glen with the loch below. It was so beautiful. Felt a little bit wrong being out here without Jack. I mean, he would have loved it. He would have been in all the streams and puddles, running around the woods, so we did miss him a lot. He probably also would have stood on a lot of the things I was photographing, so there is that, but we definitely wish he was here with us. So we'll go home and we'll see how he's doing, and then I'll see you back in the studio. my contributors on Kofi for this coffee and cake stop. I always make a point of visiting local independent businesses while I'm out exploring, rather than just doing my walk and heading straight home. Fortunately Scotland has many amazing places like this. Quite often I will play around with composition when sketching out my pieces. That's one of the good things about painting. It was actually my partner Willie who suggested grouping these three mushrooms together. Scarlet elf cups grow in the depths of winter, and they are a welcome flash of colour when not many things are growing in the wild. These bowl-shaped mushrooms often collect water, and as can be guessed from their common name, in folklore it is said that wood elves visit them each morning to drink the morning dew. I wanted to capture the water pooled in the mushroom to reference this folklore. Scarlet elf cups seem to float on the woodland floor, as their stems are very short. I like that they seem to float on the page in the same way. I often find myself drawn to painting similar things, especially mushrooms, birds and flowers. 
I'm excited to offer you some collections on my Etsy store, where you can buy a set of three prints for a lower price compared to buying them all separately. Check out my first collection now, a trio of Scottish wild mushrooms. The link to my Etsy store is in the video description below. I'm purposely not trying to make the background too detailed. I want some green moss to contrast with the vivid red mushrooms, but not detract attention from them. The dark green shading draws the eye in towards the mushrooms, which are the main focal point. Are you all better now? Is your paw all better? Do you want to go for walkies? <laughs>